problems. So we'll just see how that kind of goes. Um, welcome again. I know, thank you for inviting us. We are located at Lansing Community College. We are the, the Michigan Small Business Development Center, and we have centers all throughout the whole state. That's why I was asking what counties you lived in, because Oakland County has a center in that area. We have them in Grand Rapids, here in Lansing. We serve the tri-county area. Our tri-county area is Ingham, Eaton, and Clinton counties. That's why I was asking what kind of counties that we were in. Excuse me, if you're up in the UP, or if you have a friend in the UP, we have someone up there that can guide them through uh, the starting a business process. So again, welcome. Our centers are all over the state, like I said. Our, our headquarters happens to be at Grand Valley State University. And um, with us, we are part of Lansing Community College. And thank you for MSU Federal Credit Union for hosting our program today. Who do we serve? The Small Business Development Center at Lansing Community College, we serve brand new ventures, startups. Usually that's what the folks I work with is the startup businesses. However, we do serve existing businesses, even some that have been in business for 100 years. We also work with growth and some technology type of clients. We also do one-on-one -on -one consulting and we do online trainings too. You uh, may look at the Small Business Development Center website and double check some of those trainings that we have. Some of them are in demand, some of them are in person, some are online like this one. We do a lot of business planning consulting. So we're going to talk about some of those things and how to go ahead and get your business up and running. Educational programs that we do have, you'll have this recording and you can also go to our website and look at the trainings that we have. You can do that anytime you'd like. We have a team of about six people, myself, Lori Lonsdorf is our director, Daryl Horton is our senior consultant, Seth Murphy is the one that keeps us in line. You probably will hear him on the phone if you ever decide to have a consulting appointment with us at Lansing Community College. Tina and um, uh, Millie, they happen to be um, some other experts that we have on our team. We're funded by the Small Business Administration along with the Michigan Economic Development Corporation, that's here, and we Lansing Community College. Oakland would have other host institutions if you're looking at Traverse City and so on. What I would like to do is after this program send um, you some information so I will pass it on to the folks at MSU Credit Union and they can go ahead and send you some information. This booklet is one of the um, uh, sources that we'll send you. We're going to cover some things that's in this booklet and I want you to make sure you get that link. So I'll be sending that probably tomorrow and then that can be sent out to, to the group. A lot of folks, and you may have this, you know, kind of situation too. You have an idea, okay? How many people on the call today or online today have an idea on what kind of business they would like to start? Go ahead and type it in the chat box. And if you want to interrupt me with a couple of those ideas, that's fine. But normally what you do is have an idea, but what do we do? What do we do with that idea? How do we know that that idea is um, oh, feasible? This is a checklist that we usually go through. So has anybody sent in what kind of business they would like to start or if they're in a business so far? Artist, okay, I see that. It looks like we have someone else who wants to open their own gym. Perfect, perfect. Okay, work safety consulting, perfect, perfect. When you know your idea, then we want to grow that. And a lot of us already have expertise 
especially the folks that are consulting, they already have this expertise, but how do we know if this is going to be good for your area? We're going to talk about some of that research. So I'm going to ask you another question. Sorry, some of these are throughout the whole program. How many of you love to that that love to sell? How many of you are good salespeople? Just say yes or no. Just a yes or no question. Are you a salesperson? And we're going to talk about that. Okay, Nicholas said no. I want to hear about the artist. Are you a salesperson? I'm not going to put you on the spot. It's a trick question, gang, a little bit. All of us are salespeople. I'm a salesperson. I talk to you about my um, services at the Small Business Development Center. MSU also is a salesperson. They talk about the services they have at MSU Credit Union, Federal Credit Union. So when I'm saying this, are you a salesperson? Every one of you deals with sales. Okay. You may think, oh, no, no, I'm not that pushy salesperson like we hear used car salesmen. Okay, that is not part of sales. A lot of that is dealing with relationships and that's what you're doing. You're educating your clientele and you're helping them educate through relationship sales. So all of you should have your hand up saying that yes, you are a salesperson. Another question I always ask, and you don't have to say anything in the chat box, do you like dealing with numbers? Do you like accounting? Do you have a budget? You know, those kind of things. Those are some things that a lot of business owners have trouble with. And we, and I know MSU Federal Credit Union has programs with that to help you along, to understand your financials and those kind of things. But it's something for you to think about. If you have concerns about how to manage, how to you know deal with family and business and so on, that's when you talk to the experts. You can talk to us here at the center anytime that you want. Another thing that you want to do, all your businesses. I've seen a lot of consulting, opening up the gym, you know, the artist. If you can solve the problem or fill the need, you got the sale automatic. So what is the problem? What is the need for your type of business? Again, if you have that, instantly you have the sale. So how do we do some of the research? Okay. Let's go with coffee. If you were going to do coffee sales, everyone loves coffee. I said I did. I love coffee. You can tell how much I've drank out of this. But does everybody love coffee? Not necessarily, okay? I drink water, I may have cocoa, like our host is doing today, you know, those kind of things. So when you're looking at the big picture, does everybody love coffee? I live in rural Eaton County. We don't have a lot of fancy coffee shops. So a lot of our coffee, people just put cream, sugar, have it all natural, that's all. They don't do anything fancy with their coffee. But in Lansing or a bigger city, they may have a lot of those fancy coffee shops. So we're looking at the big picture. But who buys coffee? How many of us will go ahead and pay $5 for a cup of coffee? Will we do that daily? That's what you're looking at, who buys. And then we look at segments. So. Let's just look at this. If I'm looking at competition, indirect and direct competition, let's look at Big B, Tim Hortons, and Starbucks. Very similar. I know you're going to tell me some taste better than others. I get that. But very similar atmosphere. But who else sells coffee? Think about that for a minute. Who else sells coffee? McDonald's sells coffee. Okay. It's okay. You know, we may like that. 
Speedway, I can do it my way. They sell coffee, but they sell other things. And I'm doing this real simplified. So direct competition would be doing exactly what you're doing. Indirect could be those other businesses that may sell coffee, but it's not their mainstay. So indirect and direct, you want to look at both of those. And I know we did that very simplified, but again, that is a, a quick way of understanding what direct and indirect is. Now, we know our customer. I've been with the center for a long, long time. And the biggest questions people have is what is the licensing? What kind of licenses do we have? And the email that I'll be sending later on will have a link on how to find your licenses. Licenses can be part of a zoning. Zoning could be countywide, statewide, or it could be township or community-wide, zip code maybe, okay? Usually it's townships. But when you're looking at that, Let's say the state of Michigan says, we're fine. No licenses required, okay? But your city or your village or your, you know, town may say, we do not want that type of business in our community, okay? Here's an example of what one could be. A um, dog pound, they don't want, noisy dogs in their neighborhood. And it will be right in their zoning ordinances. You go to the city, township, county, it will, you can see where those ordinances are or the zoning or the planning would be. So you wanna review those. So the county says, yes, the county we can have dog pounds, but your community says no, city says no, township says no, or village says no. You cannot open that business until you get permission from those folks. The Planning Commission, the, the Downtown Development Authority, those folks. You cannot open. They will find you if you do. So if I was planning on doing it like a doggy daycare, did you know that is lumped in with dog pounds? Oh, totally different market but it's lumped into that. So that's when you wanna go ahead and look at more details in those areas. Can you get a variance or a waiver? Yes, but you have to go through certain channels. Very important. So licensing, see if there's any, and then we go down to the zoning. The other thing you wanna look at that could be a concern is the environmental. When we look at the environmental, we look at, are you real close to a wetland? Are you doing this? Are you doing that? Some of the bigger cities won't have this, but if I was going to do a car wash with a lot of water, yes, this is some things that we may want to look into to see how can we go ahead and um, clean the water before it goes to, you know, whatever, wherever it goes. Very important. I've had people start building their business without going through this and their businesses were shut down. They could not go any further. You wanna do that. And it's just knowing, it's just knowing these things. And sometimes we just don't know. The booklet that I'm gonna send you on the pages that you have listed here will tell you more details in those areas. Any questions regarding that so far? We can do them at the end if we need to. How many of you have already figured out what name or legal structure you want to use for your business? You may. Let me go through some of them. And then if we have questions, we can stop it right there and talk about those. A DBA is the easiest one to organize. And I know business has a lot of acronyms. So doing business as DBA is the same. You would go ahead and go through your county clerk's office in your community. 
it costs about $10, $15. It depends on the community to go ahead and do that. A lot of our small businesses are changing that to not do a DBA because it only registers the name within the county. That's it. So somebody in your neighboring county could take your name. Ooh, do we want that? And I just talked to a, I don't hardly have anybody do DBAs any longer. They go ahead and do a different one and it's called that limited liability company or LLC. That registers your name for the whole state. And it's very easy to go ahead and register. You can do it on your own and it can be very simplified. It's 50 bucks. $25 for the registration and $25 for the LLC. Easy peasy, done. Get, you can get a response in a week. It registers that name for one year. You have to renew that name the next year and it's $25. With the DBA, it registers your name for five years. And it's about 10, 15, maybe 20 bucks. It depends on your area. So many of our clients will go ahead and do the LLC. Your consultant in your area, if you're in Oakland or the Detroit area, or if you're here, it's us, we can walk you through on how to do that. It's super easy. Within a week, you get that. Another type of business uh, that you could do is a, a corporation. And the corporations is a regular C corporation that is very similar to the big um, big companies, GM, Walmart, Target, those folks. Or you can do a subchapter S, S like in Sam. And that will take an attorney to go ahead and work through. And your centers in your area, if you need help from us, we will direct you to maybe an attorney if you need one. I don't know, does MSU uh, Federal Credit Union have a list of attorneys that they would refer to? I believe we do on our website. Okay, so that could be a possibility. So you could always do it that way too. Perfect, thank you. Okay, what was that last question? I didn't get to read it all. Someone is heading out. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, we'll be on YouTube if you want to check out the rest of the Perfect, evening. perfect. Thank you. I thought maybe it was another question. So it just depends. And and if you need some expertise, um, you know, talk to maybe your accountant, your attorney, a uh, financial planner. You can talk to us at the uh, Michigan Small Business Development Centers, and we can kind of help you along to make those decisions. Gotta pay taxes. Okay, how do we go ahead and do that? Yes, you still have to do those things. When you get an LLC taken care of, then what we do is get an employer identification number, EIN. And that EIN is your like your social security number simplified for your business. You can get one if you do a partnership, if you go ahead and do a DBA doing business as or you go ahead and do a limit liability company. Super easy to do. It's through the IRS website and you get it immediately. When you get that number and the LLC first and then your EIN, then you can apply for some sales tax stuff. So if you're selling anything, your consultants, you won't have to do the sales tax, uh, but you may have to do something else. Anything that's dealing with the art, you would definitely need sales tax. And then there's withholdings and all, all this other fun stuff. And I believe MSU Federal Credit Union has some expertise in those areas that can guide you. The next thing that you wanna think about, you got everything together, and you may even do this ahead of filing the business name, but you wanna start thinking about your costs your startup costs. You want to start thinking about everything you need to go ahead and do the business. 
this is another document that we will send you that you can work with. It's a Word document. You just plug in the numbers. If you are going to work with someone through the Small Business Development Center network consultants, they would love you to see this, okay, and have this done. It's very simple. You look at one-time costs. This is your startup costs, and then this is your monthly costs. And it gives you a really good, quick understanding. Do we need a bank loan and maybe go, you know, to MSU, uh, Federal Credit Union, or do we? can we fund this on our own? And a lot of our clients are going back and forth on that. And um, this is something for you to kind of look at. And we can kind of talk about can we scale it down if we need to, or do we need more money for what, what type of business you're going into? Now, Kelly, right quick, we do have a question in the chat. Yeah. Um, what is Nexus? What does Nexus mean in terms of sales tax? Oh, sales tax? What was that again? Nexus? Nexus. N-E-X-U-S. I don't know. Do you? I do not. I do not. That could be cool. something we need to check into. Can you give us more information on that? Was it Nicholas that did that one? Or was it who mentioned yes. that one? Oh, to collect, uh, that could be through the state that you have to go through that. That could be what that means through the state of Michigan. But uh, I will double check and I'll pass it along. But I think it's their program through the state of Michigan that they do want you to do your sales tax and everything through that program. I have not heard about that, but I haven't. I, I know that our um, Daryl probably has. And so I will double check on that for you and uh, make sure that you get that information. But I think it's the program, if I remember right, it's the program that the state of Michigan has. Um, but I will double check to make sure. Thank you. I love to get stumped. I think that's good. If I Google it, I probably could figure it out really quickly, but we won't do that tonight. So we have the startup costs. We talked about that. The next thing that everybody should do, and I and you're gonna probably hate me for a little bit, everyone should do some type of a business plan. Now, you may have heard the business plan is just for loans. Well, yeah, you gotta do a business plan for a loan. But a business plan really can help you get very organized. A business plan is a set in time. What is what are you planning on doing right now? Okay, what phase? You know, the different phases that you may be doing with your business. Parts of the business plan always change. There's two parts. The market can always change. If any one of us remembers back in 2019, in 2020, our market changed quite drastically uh, because of the pandemic. The banks changed, LCC changed. We had to serve our, uh, our clients differently, differently. And so the market can change, okay? It could be our poor uh, our friends in Florida, their market could change very quickly because of the storm that went through. The other part that always changes, and it can change three months, six months, a year, is the financial statements. So a business plan is almost like a living kind of document that you have to look at maybe two or three times a year. Now, in 2019 to the beginning of 2020, none of us knew what was going to happen the next two years. I didn't have the crystal ball. I know MSU Federal Credit Union did not have the crystal ball. We were pivoting. We were um, being fluid with all, everything we had. That is something that we're talking to our clients about a lot. I used to say, you know, if there was a snow day for a um, retailer, try to get sales during that snow day. Well, we had a COVID two years 
that we were trying to do those snow days and trying to get people in. And so that's one thing that we really want to look into a business plan is how can we, another banker friend of mine says, how can we be fluid? I love that word. How can we be fluid and move with whatever is going on during, you know, what's the, the situations? And so when we're looking at this, how can we be fluid if there is another, um, uh, you know, uh, snow day or COVID kind of thing that goes on? So the business plan is very important for those kind of things. Will you look at it differently in three months? Absolutely. It may be six months before you look at it uh, totally, but you need to keep looking at it and see if you're still going in the right direction. What I have done several years ago is do a one-page business plan for folks when they first start. And this is really good for us, even your banker, if you go ahead and talk to them, is having a really quick idea on what your business is going to be doing. I want to send this to you too for you can look at it. It may be two pages if you type it up, that's fine. Do bullet format, don't do paragraphs, but if you answer each one of these questions, then you can always enhance it with a full-fledged business plan. So who are you selling to? What is your product? How are you going to make money? Okay, how are you going to explain your business to someone? So if we do this, then we can go ahead and do a more detailed business plan. And you'll be so smart if you do this. So let's say you don't need funding. Okay. If you don't need funding, let's go with the scenario that we have here. I'm a lawn care person and I want to do lawns. How much does it take to start mowing lawns? Okay, we may have to have insurance, okay? Uh, file a business name, okay? Um, but what else do we need? Do I need a um, full, great, big lawnmower? Or do I need a push? Okay? Let's say I just need a push, push lawnmower. Do I need a trailer to put it on? No, I'm just doing the neighborhood. If I got 20 people in the neighborhood that I'm going to go mow their lawn, I can go to house to house to house to house. Okay. What else do you need? Maybe a rake, a weed whopper, eater, something to get the weeds out. You may need some bags, shovel maybe, an edger maybe. But you could really start very, very small. And if you can, why not just start and see how it goes? A lot of farmers market people, bakery, cookies, cakes, if you can sell them at a, a farmer's market, that's a great way to get it small for you can grow into your brick and mortar bakery and have a following. So we always talk about how can we manage you your business idea and an idea that you can work with. I'm working with a client right now. Financing is not going to be an option for her at this point. Credit score is great, but they don't have enough for, for a down payment, you know, those kind of things. It may take a little while. So how do we get started smaller for we can be an existing business when that starts? So there's some ways that we we talk about them are, uh, here at the Small Business Development Center um, and the other centers that we have, we talk about those things and see if it's something that you can do uh, now instead of maybe th uh, three years from now. Financing. Banking institutions, financial institutions are a great source. We, are, we know that you have a host that's a great source. Some people will go to family and friends. That's fine. A lot of my clients right now are dealing self-funding at this point or going to the bank. Okay, so that's a possibility. But the big thing about scams, 
I've been with the center long enough that I remember the last time we had scams and it was a downturn. If you find out that there's a grant, you know, that's a great big word around uh, going on right now. If there's a grant that you have to pay for, it's not legitimate, not legitimate at all. We did have grants, you know, with the, um, the help businesses stay in business, the PPP, the idle loans and the monies that way. Those are no longer okay. Uh, you can't apply for those, but those were for existing business owners. For startups, there's very little out there for grants. Okay. And so if you find anything, and I've been telling my clients, if you find anything that's seeing grant money out there, you can always contact your bank for one thing, your financial institution. You can contact us through the Michigan Small Business Development Centers, and we will do some hunting for you to see if it's a legitimate source. We have some pockets in the community that may be a legitimate source, but if it's something like, um, I get people that say Oprah has um, money out there. Um, uh, some of the um, athletes have money out there to start, like Magic Johnson, um, those kind of things. Those are very, very competitive. And probably your odds are going to be very small, you know, to get some of those funds. So that's what we look at, too, to say, you know, Let's look at how many have been applied for and how many people win and where do they win those from? Because you're dealing with everybody in the US with some of those. Okay. Did you get, uh, do you get that question a lot about grants? I have not, but I, I've definitely learned more and more about scams lately. And mm. it's, it's something that comes up, especially and right now. And we're going to hear more of them, especially with uh, gas prices going up and, um, you know, increase of everything. We're going to see more. Just be cautious. Talk to your financial institution. Talk to us. Talk to, you know, people um, find out more. That's all I want you to do is find out more. If you need to ask us, do that. Um, if it's something from another state that has happened before, I have called the Better Business Bureau or emailed the Better Business Bureau, the, um, oh, oh, what's the other ones that are out there? Um, the other organizations in those states and find out that it was a scam and had to tell a client. And it's, it's kind of crazy, but hey, I'd rather do it and save money then have you um, lose money. So always plan for success. That's what you're looking at here. I, a lot of times you hear a lot of businesses fail. Okay. Yes, that happens. Okay. It, it just happens. We've seen that with the pandemic with some of our neighbor uh, businesses and so on, but you plan for success, have a good business plan. If you don't have expertise in the area that you want to go into business, get the expertise. That's a big thing. You, they want uh, any financial institution wants to know that you have expertise in that field. A lot of you were consultants. You probably have the expertise already. You want enough capital. Restaurants have, have been known not to have enough capital. And that's one thing you really want to do. If you're going into a food business, it's mostly more money than what you think. You want to get knowledge. Definitely do that and get the right location. One of my clients years ago was a coffee shop and did great business. Wonderful business. Seeing her, seeing the business owner a few years later. And I says, how's everything going? She goes, I had to close. I go, why? They closed her road permanently. And the traffic wasn't there anymore. I always tell people, look at the Department of Transportation's website and see what kind of construction or road closures you're going to have. Because right now, everything's under construction. You know, everywhere we have construction. If you're a restaurant owner and you have road closures, there's no insurance that will help you keep your business going. So you may have to 
be fluid. You may have to pivot, maybe get a food truck for a while. How are you going to deliver your food uh, for you can stay um, up and running? Okay, so the right location is crucial. But again, look at the Department of Transportation's website and see if there's going to be any road closures. Um, we deal with that a lot with our clients and um, trying to be fluid and again have um, like a COVID plan, you know, a plan of action for you can still get your product to your um, oh, your customers or your service. Definitely you want to have a COVID plan, okay. Um, this has been crucial for a lot of our businesses, even small ones even small retailers, we say have a COVID plan. So if you have a, um, a person that's coming into your place and they have COVID, what do you do? How do you uh, let people know? Those kind of things. Um, some um, oh, counties are getting a little spike, some are not. So you may want to just have something here to say, what do we do? If we have a, an employee that has COVID, what do we do? And um, there are new rules all the time. So you can always talk to us. You can talk um, to your insurance agents, you know, those kind of things to see about that COVID plan. I wish we didn't have to talk about COVID anymore. Wouldn't that be nice? So what the next steps are for you is to deal with looking at the guide. I'm going to send that to you. I'm going to send you the one page business plan. I'll go ahead and send the startup kit uh, or startup cost worksheet for you and consider more trainings. MSU a Federal Credit Union has great trainings. Keep working with those. Um, we also have trainings through our organization. Ours are free. Some other areas, there's a cost, but there's a lot of them on demand that are uh, no fees. So you can always take those. And work with a small business development center consultant in your area. Our services are free. There's no cost to you. You can work with us for life. I've had people that have been in business 15, 20 years, and they're still coming back and talking about different things. So we're here for you, and we can help you and guide you through, you know, whatever your um, questions may be. And it could be working through a business plan, it could be a growth, it could be technology, it just depends on what you're looking at. Again, we are the Small Business Development Center at Lansing Community College. We have centers in all the other regions. Definitely the Metro Detroit, you got great centers in that area. You said some folks were from Oakland. We have centers all through the whole, the whole uh, uh, United States. I don't want you to go outside the state. I want you to stay here. But I'm working with somebody that's going to Texas. So they're going to be working with the center in Texas. We've had folks that moved from Oregon, came back to Michigan, and we help them here. They may work with the center in Oregon for a while and then work with us. We all work together. We do the same things. We do the same things. So is there any questions that I can answer? Or did I answer everybody's questions already? Uh, we did have one other one come through. Somebody would like to know, what is the difference between an, a limited liability corporation and a little limited liability company? Oh, same. It's the same. Yep, same. Now, there is a limited liability professional, and that's more for doctors and attorneys and those kind of things. But an LLC corporation company, it's, it's the same. They usually say company. And before we get too deep into our questions, we do want to create a brave space. So we'll go ahead and conclude the recorded portion of this evening. Um, thank you so much, Kelly. Thank you for everyone who You're attended. welcome. You're um, welcome. Definitely. Um, if you have to jump off, thank you so much for coming. Feel free to check out other our, our other seminar series events coming up. We have Controlling Your Credit next Tuesday, October 4th, as well as the gift of a legacy the um, following week on Wednesday, October 12th. Got a lot of really great events coming up. You can register again at www.msufcu.org forward slash events, the same way you found this one, and we would love to have you. 
So with that, we'll go ahead and stop the recording and we can transition fully into our discussion portion. Perfect. Thank you.